like really f- put one of the the handles like really far into my mouth to like chew on while I look <laughs> at this thing in an inquisitive manner because I feel like that would look good when actually it looks incredibly awkward and like you're trying to choke on your own sunglasses. Oh, mwah. beautiful. He is played by Giacomo Janella. Uh, wonderful name. Love it. Yes. And he, he has been in some uh, English language things that I haven't seen. He was in the, the TV series Empire for a couple of episodes. Oh, nice. Uh, the, the Bourgeois for a couple of episodes. Oh, good. Uh, always playing uh, very Italian characters. I can imagine. Bestiari yeah. or uh, Battista Colonna. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Maybe he'll be in the new Mario Brothers movie. Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> I can't imagine anything. Uh, that would make me want to watch that, that, that film. <laughs> Uh, um, and then of course you know is it is it a shark movie if it doesn't open with some sort of powerpoint that with someone going look sharks and an audience of people going sharks wow yep yeah so yeah we cut to uh stephen baldwin as david franks uh love the powerpoint he's in front of like students who are really memorable and have a lot of, they have like more lines than some of the main characters in this movie. That's true. Uh, particularly uh, one, particularly, uh, uh, well, I can't remember what, what his name was, like Sherman or something. Jason or something, where he's like, <clears throat> I can dive. I, I, like, like, I love the so derision far. you put on my name, as you say. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh, it's probably called something <laughs> Stupid, like Jason. Ugh. It's, <laughs> it's fair. I don't like I don't like the name, so I've never liked my name. That's why I go you by Jay. You named after um, Jason Voorhees. I'm named after nothing. My parents have never seen a Jason Voorhees. <laughs> a movie. <film. laughs> okay. I mean, pretty much. Uh, no one in my family has seen Star Wars. So. Oh, wow, that's actually, like, impressive. I'd say worrying, personally. I so. feel like you'd have to have gone out of your way to achieve that in this yeah. day and age. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Props uh, to that. That's given that my dad is a film fan, I, I'm into films oh. because of, like, he, we, we'd have conversations about them, and he's never seen arguably one of the biggest films of all time. Mm. Uh, yeah. Or, or anything in the entire franchise. Wow. Uh, I, I feel Again, sorry for that's... my nephew. Because uh, he's going to grow up without this in his life. I'm yeah. sure he'll be fine. I'll make sure he's fine. <laughs> That's my mission. Star Wars is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I feel like it's important to to not not to like obsess over it, but watch I think the film. You should, I, yeah, I think you should see it. I think you should see it in chronological order in terms of release as well. I think you should watch. You know, being somebody who saw them in chronological order in terms of timeline i would agree with your statement yes yeah because i remember taping them off the tv and watching them and i was obsessed with um oh god is it return of the jedi the uh the, the, ewoks yes yeah the ewok one is my favorite one that's my wife's favorite um, one as well. i love it it's so good uh and then and then the prequels came out and there was a whole discourse because it was also at the time where movie criticism was like thing bad actually. So everybody hated them, read that media review, like dunked on them for like a century. And then of course the new ones came out and we got The Last Jedi, which is now the best Star Wars movie. Am I right? That's the one with Laura Dern. That is. It is one yeah. that I've grown to appreciate. The first time I watched it, I, I was bored. Uh, but since then, I've it's risen greatly in my ranks. I uh, yeah, I just think it's so gorgeous. I love the some of the character arcs that they get to go on. I just really really appreciate it. I remember being in the cinema with that particular shot that's got no audio. Yep, fantastic. And, and like, oh god, it, I was just like, yes, this is good. This is this is great. So yeah, mm, and then I actually really like Phantom Menace. I think the pod race I, is fun. I like it too. I mean that Phantom Menace was my, was my first Star Wars film. I saw it in ninety nine yeah, when it came out. That's cute. I didn't actually go to the cinema to watch it. My family did, but I chose not to because I I don't know why. I I actively was like I don't want to go and see <laughs> this movie. I was probably scared. I was probably frightened of like aliens. Okay. Or something. I mean, Darth Maul could be pretty terrifying to a child. I <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. genuinely, I think it was something like that that I was like, oh no, that's scary. I'd rather go and watch Bewitched around Grandma's house or something. <laughs> The well, I was gonna say it couldn't be the film because that was that was yeah, six years later, so yeah, the TV show. Uh, good. 
love Wait. how you know when the live action movie is the witch. I've King never even seen it. I just, it's just <laughs> in relation to the Phantom Men. It just sparked in my head. Like, oh, that was, that was 2005. We all know this. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Nicole Kidman will. Fall. Ariel, I've You're checked right. it. It is right. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm so broken. Uh, so, uh, so, so uh, yeah, there's, yeah, there's one particular student who uh, keeps on mouthing off to, to to Stephen Baldwin, to David Franks, and he's saying that he you know, Stephen Baldwin, he's showing the the wreckage of a and ship. Titanic, but it's basically like the opening of the Titanic movie. Yeah, and it, and actually the the score of this is an op- operatic choir score that sounds very similar to the Titanic. <laughs> it is, isn't it? But it's been like coming into Venice. It's like. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit when they're on the front of the boat and they're watching the yeah. boat. Yeah, the dolphins. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, that makes me cry so much. Uh, I actually have a comment about the soundtrack. I put the soundtrack is like one person going ooh ah because there is just a bit where it's just someone times. going ooh and like that was the soundtrack and I was like, I mean, it's memorable, I guess, in like a terrible. Yeah, way, I remember so. from the other film that came out <laughs> a, a decade earlier. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing that now. Fine. <laughs> um, yes, so it's very Titanic-y. And we meet his... Do you, we, oh, sorry, I'm just skipping ahead. I was going to meet... It's fine. Well, we first there's there's the, the Dean. Dean Flavers is his name. <laughs> Dean, I loved him so much. He was like, we've got some news from Venice. Is my dad okay? No, they don't think so. They found some dead bodies. Oh, well, I better get out that. Puts yeah, his hand on his shoulder. All, all expenses are paid. Okay, good luck. Bye. And, like, that yeah. was his role. Uh, it's the, the worst performance in the film. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> Johnny Happ is like, you were not given much to play with, but you chose to opt out today. Because yeah. I assume you were only on set for a day. Like, oh, if that. Uh, <laughs> like an hour. It had two takes and called it a day. Yeah, Michael um, McCoy it gets my worst actor of the film award. For that <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant all expenses paid we'll pay we'll pay your expenses okay goodbye <laughs> like, like looks like, at the camera as he walks off so the, this this school university whatever is going to pay for him to go to venice to go to venice for like for like fam, personal family reasons yeah, to like, see if his dad's dead understanding co- like plays and and you know like a real family unit unit because Al, um, Baldwin brother finds out, and then two seconds later, as the dean is walking off, <laughs> Laura is walking on. Oh, it's all around the school. <laughs> I just heard I came as soon as I could. I'm so sorry. It's like we just heard as well. Uh, it's in Laura. the same <laughs> scene. One guy walks off, she walks in. Yes. I... <laughs> I just heard what because you were round the corner eavesdropping on my conversation. Like, it's like an improv exercise. Right? It's, like... here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so ridiculous. But she's incredibly understanding. It's a very healthy, loving relationship. And she <laughs> at this point, maybe. <laughs> um. Yeah, and she's she's very supportive. She's an expert, you see, in the medieval period. <laughs> Which is very convenient. <laughs> Which is also like the medieval period. I'm sorry, are we talking from like the second the Romans left to like, like which medieval period? The medieval period of Germany? The medieval period of Italy in particular? The medieval period of England? Which started when the Romans left and ended when like, I think the Plantagenets took the throne essentially because we're still technically calling the Tudor era medieval like that is centuries of history how can you be an expert in centuries of history like that's insane that's so much to cover that is so much yeah I you're not an expert in that much (laughs) like you're not like maybe if you were an expert in like like the crusades or like i don't know just something that's like related to the people that were finding the treasure but like to be like she's an expert in the medieval era i was like what no well very much she, she doesn't say that about herself this is her fiance yeah. says it about her so he's maybe but picking he, her up he, making her sound more he impressive says, like, she's very clever yeah. it's like she, she hasn't knit she's right there my dude like she can <laughs> speak for herself she'll never prove it but she is <laughs> she yeah. will never show this <laughs> at all but uh she's incredibly intelligent so yeah she's she's supporting him and they're off to venice yep. together all their classes covered everything's fine no problems He's there fine. and they're off so they go to venice 
and uh, you get a nice br- brooding shot of them on a gondola. Again, these people are not in Venice. They they show in the, <laughs> the DVD making of shows uh, Stephen Baldwin and Vincent Johnson just on a boat, green screen behind them. And they filled, they filled in Venice, so Amazing. they didn't even try. Uh, and they head to the morgue, where this film becomes just a, an episode of CSI. Uh, where, <laughs> complete with the same score as CSI, with the, uh, the, the mortician uh, revealing a corpse with all the drama of a magician. Yeah. Be, like pulling the veil off some trick. The woman's disappeared. Uh, with the, the score going, dah, 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 as, as that happens. And, like, Laura can't possibly look. She has to, like, look away very dramatically, and it's all, like, a mangled flesh. Yeah, this the, was like, the first moment I broke down in tears car. crying at the start. <laughs> yeah. <I had> to... <laughs> We're, like, ten minutes in. Because <laughs> uh, it's such a, like, the sheet is removed, the camera zooms in, cut to Stephen Baldwin's, like, pensive face. Like, uh, so bored. Like, he does not have facial expressions in this movie. No, he, he chose to not do that yeah uh but he i just if i was working in this mod in in the morgue i'd like to think i'd do this like, oh, this is how sure. i reveal corpses to people who have come to identify their father is this your father <laughs> <Bow>! <laughs> is this your card <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like really bizarre jilted conversation where he's like and what did you say the cause of death was I didn't. And it's like, what? <laughs> no, she did. You're talking to the wrong, like, different, she said, yeah. <laughs> the like, other lady. <laughs> what do you, like, what is that? I really, I really love to hate that sort of like, how old did you say you were? I didn't. I didn't catch your name. I didn't throw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, that like, that ridiculous, like over the top, like just engage in the conversation, my dude. Like we are in a morgue, and these were potentially my father. Can we not do this right now? And then it's like the cause of death, a propeller accident. And then he's like, "But you don't believe that." It's like, don't tell me what I do <laughs> not don't believe. You're like, a professor. You're not like a detective or anything. Like... <laughs> yeah. This is not CSI. As much as my flourish liked to. <laughs> You know, proposition that. Like... And they're joined by uh, Lieutenant Sophia Totti, played by yes. Hilda van der Mullen, uh, who then escorts them to the police because the, none of these corpses was his father. So he needs to go to the police to do a missing persons or something. And it ends up turning into he wants to dive down and look for his father. And he's because, given... because he can tell. Yes, he can from tell. The, from he's the archaeologist. corpses. This this archaeologist can tell from the corpses that those people died of a shark attack. Shark attacks that I don't know. I'm, I wouldn't claim to be an expert. My, my, my sister. The whole reason we watch lots of shark movies is my sister went through a whole like decade almost of being obsessed with them. The bathroom door was just filled with shark facts, <laughs> and the majority of the time you're going to get like one nom nom chomp. Uh, and then you will bleed to death or die or... As happens with everyone that happens to in this film, apart from one character, <laughs> who is the lead of the film. <laughs> but so, so what they're not going to do is, like, eat you like a rabid cat would eat you after you've died in your apartment and been left for days. Like, which is the implication based on the mangled corpses that were shown in this scene. Yeah. It's like, no, no, you would have, like like a couple of chunks taken out of you maybe and like have lost all of your blood or something yeah. like you're not gonna have been like nom nom chewed up and spat out again like, i feel like if there's any, there wouldn't be a lot left? of you left probably. yeah why do they look like porridge like <laughs> <laughs> yes it's it's unpleasant to look at uh so he's given and, and, and inaccurate <laughs> yeah, exactly yes <laughs> yes yeah, the rest of the film is perfect shark in venice <laughs> i'm very apt about that and yeah. so he's given 48 hours to to do the search. He's not allowed to go to the press, and Lieutenant Totti must Which, be like, with him. Why would he? And, well, <laughs> well it's, be, it's because the this guy, the police chief, uh, Captain Bonacera, played by Atana Srebrev, uh, he's, I guess he's concerned about the local uh, tourism, and if it gets out that they've got sharks there, which his, his big line is, there are no sharks in Venice. There are Remember, no, there's no sharks, sharks in Venice. In Venice. Uh, if it gets out that there are, then... Things could Open be a problematic. This exactly, is the, the exactly. mayor from Jaws character, I guess. Exactly, yes. Although this guy's slightly more effective. Don't be like the mayor from Jaws! <laughs> not... Never compare me to the mayor from Jaws! Never compare me to the mayor from Jaws! So they go to uh, uh, David's father's apartment. It's been ransacked. It's been trashed. 
and yeah, uh, was that the... an accident? <laughs> I like how you're putting an American accent. Oh, I suppose you could be doing Laura. Yeah, you're doing Laura. Yeah, I'm doing Laura. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to even attempt to be the police detective. She's like, 